There's a special word for today. The word is three letters, W-O-W. Everybody say, wow. 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 Whew. God loves to amaze us and then amaze our amazement, just outdo himself. He's exceedingly great. So if you think he's good today, stick with it. Tomorrow will be better than today in him. Amen? Amen. When, when Christians look at better things, it doesn't always measure up like the world. You think a, a better job would be a more high-paying job. That's not always true. You may take a cut in pay, and God may know how to multiply that in ways beyond just financial. But he can do that, but he can also do a lot of other things and open doors for you to witness, to give, to share, to love. So don't limit God to what you can see, taste, touch, feel, and even imagine in your own mind because he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Maybe he reads our minds. I don't know. But he can do above what you can think. So... I'm pretty limited, I think, compared to him. Our Wednesday night prayer group has just been blowing up. I mean, it's just growing in number, but also in fervency and strength and power and the number of cards that are being placed up here and the number of testimonies following. Y'all... Last week, we testified of a couple people delivered of addictions and things, and today, someone is here in this room, 183 days free of alcohol, 183 days, amen. Amen. Freedom looks good on you. Amen. Our Wednesday, this Wednesday, will be the day before our National Day of Prayer uh, celebration of our nation. And we're going to focus a little bit on Wednesday night in here, preparing for that, that day uh, out there at the gazebo and our nation. If you're here and you don't think America needs prayer, we need to have a meeting. I can help you with that. Amen. We need prayer, don't we? Our homes, our families, our churches, our government. Amen. Our cities, prisons. We need prayer. Amen. So today, if you're watching us online, we welcome our online uh, group. Wow, what a great number of people log on to this around the country and even around the world. We get feedback and people interacting with us. And and we have a family here with us today that visited us online for quite a while. Carol, where are you sitting? Did she slip out? Carol and, and four of her grandchildren are with us today. Amen. And let's give our online audience a great big hand. Thank you for visiting with us via the internet, which is used for a lot of bad things. But if you'll tune in to the River Valley Life Center YouTube channel and tell your friends about it, like us and share us on Facebook and Instagram, we believe God is going to grow what we're doing out there. If you're a guest with us today, you're here for the first time, We're not going to make you stand up or quote scripture or anything like that, uh, pray or prophesy, but we would like for you to fill out one of our little cards. It's just real simple. Put your name on there and put it in the black box, or if you don't mind, visit us at the hayloft. Someone took down our hayloft sign. It's just a countertop now. It's not a hayloft. It's a bean counter, but (laughs) we're going to put a new sign up if I can figure out uh, what they did with it. We'll put our sign back up, but anyway... Fill out that card and put a little information on there. We'd love to be in touch with you. If you're here for the second time, hey, you might as well just dive in the river. You might as well just go ahead and fill out that second time card 
and say, sign me up for pathways and whatever, you know, just, I want it all, right? right. So we, we want to get you in that July Pathways class. And uh, let, let me see, who's coming to Pathways next Sunday for lunch? Stand up. I want to see, I want to recognize you. Stand up. You're going to be at Pathways lunch next Sunday. Where are all those wonderful new people? I know the class is full, so uh, thank you. Thank you. Yes, give them a hand. And we're looking forward to that, and it's going to be a great day. We're going to have a great time, and uh, thank you, Betsy, for making that happen. If you're watching us online from uh, Kingman, Indiana, Waterford, Michigan, or the Pontiac area, or Lexington, Kentucky, we welcome you into our campuses there. So visit the river, the River Church in Waterford, the River Church in King, Kingman, the River Church in Lexington. And today is one year anniversary for Lexington, Kentucky. Pastor Andrew and April Eberhardt, give them a hand. Yeah, they did it. Many, many, many years to come. And the first one is, is a big one. It's a special one. And we sent Casey and our uh, first Wednesday praise team down there to lead them in praise and worship today and lift the burden and break the yokes in that area. I want to give honor to Jim Lipka. Where is Jim Lipka? See, you don't see him because he does more behind the scenes. He is out there making sure that there's safe parking lots and Strange vehicles driving up on the property. He can ask them, what are you doing? Can we help you? Here's you a bottle of water. You know, make sure that they're loved, but make sure you're safe. Amen? And he's really doing a good... Jim Lipka, he's an elder here. He's on our trustee board. Amen. He leads our security team and our ushers. Serving the Lord together. Amen. Amen. We're going to talk about covenant, so get your pages Bible. Get it ready. We're going to read together here in just a minute. But first of all, I want to give you a quick introduction. Covenant, it needs to be personified. We need to treat covenant itself as if it were a thing, a person, a being with, with our hearts, okay? So we're going to talk about today the heart of covenant, the heart of covenant. Covenant calls to every heart. Covenant seeks a dwelling place. The Bible says God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Your heart longs for truth. Your spirit man recognizes truth. That's why you sit and listen to someone preach the Bible, because you, you lock in. You're, something says, ooh, that's good. Ooh, I believe that. Ooh, I can buy into that. Wow, I think, I think that's right. I think I need to know that. I think I need to change my life around that because that feels like and seems like and sounds right. You know what I'm talking about? You have an ear for truth, an eye for truth. The Bible says, buy the truth and sell it not. They loved not the truth and they were turned over to damnation because they loved not the truth. People that don't love the truth, they're not going to sit here on Sunday morning. But if you are here and you sit through these services that usually last about two hours, you love truth. And I'm so happy to be around lovers of truth. In the midst of a lying generation, in the midst of propaganda and lies and everybody out there just saying whatever they want to say and it doesn't matter 
Nobody's holding people accountable. They can get on the airwaves, get up on the microphone, get up in a church, get up on the news, and just say anything and everything. And nobody holds them accountable. Even on our college campuses, they just take history books and tear out pages and just keep right on going. And nobody seems to care, seems to hold them accountable. We need the truth. Love the truth. Buy the truth. Hold on to truth. It will make you free. Anybody want to be made free? Every soul born of woman seeks to be in the warmth and safety of covenant. In the last three years, we see an enormous increase in our nation of suicide and homelessness. My heart is breaking for those souls because those two groups of people are people that are absent from covenant. People who seek covenant but can't seem to find it. The attack that came upon our country 40 and 50 years ago and is increased up until today even, the attack on the nuclear family. Wow. The place where God first made covenant was in family. That's the, the basis of covenant. And you can, you can check it out in statistics that the incarcerated are mostly the fatherless. Those who did not see covenant kept in their home were not able to bind into covenant of the law of the land. Makes total sense. A fatherless community. Uh, one, one large uh, state prison did a, a survey one time and they said on Mother's Day, the mailboxes were just full of cards going to moms. And on Father's Day, nothing. Why? Lacking covenant. Coming through hard times without covenant. The good news is God wants to make covenant with you. And in that covenant with you, the fruit will show the, the family comes together. Amen? The family is the very fiber our nation was built on. So I want you to stand with me in your pages Bible in your hand. If you have a device with the Bible scriptures on it, scroll through there and find Psalm chapter 68. In verse 6, and we're only going to read the first line of verse 6, but we're going to read it out loud together, and I'm in the New King James Version, but whatever your version is, just read it out loud together. If you don't have a Bible or a device with the Scripture on it, we will put it on the screen for you right now. Everybody ready? God sets the solitary in families. Let's do that again. God sets the solitary in families. You may be seated. I was just kidding. Stand back up. Hey, I... I didn't have a joke for the message, so I thought I'd just pull a trick on you. Joke's on you, right? Okay, turn to someone and repeat after me. I told you we're going to turn to our neighbor today. You can't get out of here without talking to somebody. Repeat after me. In case no one told you today, you are beautiful. You are needed. You are alive for a reason. You are stronger than you think. You are loved. Don't ever give up. 
Now you may be seated. Thank you, thank you. That was, that was good. So when we talk about family, I think uh, the majority of us in this room that are over 50 years old probably would, when we think about family, we probably would kind of scroll back in our mind to the days of black and white television. How many of you remember black and white television now? Okay, happy birthday to you. <laughs> You're not counting birthdays if you remember that. Amen? I think black and white TV was, was better. Amen. Maybe not more entertaining. Maybe not as graphic, dynamic. But I can literally watch five minutes of color TV, but I can watch days of black and white. We know. <laughs> Give me some Andy Griffith. Amen. Some Leave It to Beaver. Now, the funny thing is about that Andy Griffith show, it, 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 it was solid. I mean, your, your kids, but... There wasn't much family in terms of the nuclear family because no one was married. We don't, I mean, Floyd wasn't married. And the only married person that you ever saw much of was Otis, and he was drunk all the time. <laughs> Barney wasn't married. <laughs> right? But when we think about family, I think most of us would say, leave it to Beaver. It's kind of the family that we, we get in our mind. It's put your suit and tie on and come to the table for dinner every day. Dress up for dinner. Get your play clothes off and clean up and come to the dinner table every night. Family dinner. And, and you got to admit, there was less of all the stuff we're trying to deal with nowadays because of the family unit, the Leave it to Beaver. If you raised your hand up remembering black and white TV, you remember how those visits to Grandma's house were consistent. And, you know, for me, it was my great-grandma. My grandma's was all the time, but my great-grandma... We went to every Saturday morning. We went to great grandma's house and we hated it. <laughs> we were bored. It was funny because my great grandma lived to be 100 and she was uh, in her 80s and she moved about every three months. It was the funniest thing. We never knew where we were going to find great grandma. <laughs> Mammy, Mammy Cox lived in Tupelo, Mississippi, and she knew Elvis. And, and uh, her little brother s swore that he gave Elvis a spanking when he was a kid because <laughs> they were picking cotton and Elvis was being lazy. And he had to whip him to get him to pick cotton. But we knew church every Sunday, marriage was sacred, God was honored, the tithe is the Lord's, sin was abhorred by everybody. Holiness and righteousness were always exalted, doing good was praised, and everyone was loved and welcomed into your home. When family and covenant were at the core and the root of our culture and our society. This was true in Bible times. You read the Old Testament and you talk about dysfunctional family after dysfunctional family. Coming right up until Jesus' time, the world was a mess. This isn't the first time God has seen people get 
wacky, okay? As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. This is not God's first rodeo, if I could use a more modern term. But Jesus came, and the cross was God's instrument, making sure that everyone has a chance at covenant and family. No matter who you are, no matter who raised you or didn't raise you, no matter how much you were loved or unloved, abused or mistreated by those in authority, the cross was God's message to you that said you are loved, you are special, you are beautiful, you're going to make it, you can get through this, I welcome you, I set you in families. This is a safe place for you. In the presence of God, you have safety and security to tell somebody, that message really convicted me today. I need some help. You can tell somebody that as they were singing that song, I realized that I need prayer about this situation. You can tell somebody, I haven't been treating my wife right, and I need to get with somebody and get some help so I can be a better husband. In this atmosphere, you can be broke and talk about it. In this atmosphere, you can be vulnerable. Just open up and say, I've been doing some stuff that I'm ashamed of and I don't want anybody to know about, but I need to confess my faults one to another and pray for one another so that I can be healed. That's what the Word of God says. When you ask Jesus in your heart, you are making room for covenant to dwell in you. When Jesus gave his disciples that cup, that dreadful night when he was getting them ready for his death and his departure, he gave them that cup and he said, I've already told you I'll never leave you or forsake you, but I'm going away in my body, but this cup is the covenant, the new covenant covenant. It's never been done before. 4,000 years had passed since Adam and this covenant he was about to give to them had never been done before. But he gave them that cup and he said, this cup is my covenant with you in my blood. No covenant like a blood covenant. Turn to Ephesians chapter 1. All praise to God, verse 3. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. Everybody here without fault, stand up. But you are without fault In his eyes, if you are a believer, if you have repented of your sins and been buried in water in Jesus' name, under the blood covering that came from the cross of Calvary, you've entered into a new covenant. And in that new covenant, he says, he made you to be, he chose you in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. You might look in the mirror and say, you stinking, rotten, dirty old scoundrel. But when Jesus looks back at you, he says, you holy, wonderful, righteous, beloved, covenant child of mine, you are perfect. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he's poured out on us 
who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. He has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. He's poured it out on you. He's lavished his love on you. He cares about you. You are special to him. You got to believe that. Men will treat you bad. Women will treat you bad. Parents will mess up. They'll make mistakes. They'll do crazy things. Human beings are going to always fail you at some point. Don't put humans on a higher pedestal than God because he's the only one that will never leave you or forsake you. He's the only one that will never forget you. He cares for you. He loves you. He's with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. So what do we do about this, Pastor Paul? How does this work? I, I, I don't feel holy. I, 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 don't, I don't even know what holy means. I don't even know how this all is going to work. Turn to Romans chapter 8. In this covenant... It's, it's not about just doing right and wrong. It's not about a, a list of rules and regulations. It's about a whole new walk. It's about a whole new life. It's about turning 180 degrees and completely walking away from all that old stuff. It's a new time, a new day, a new life. In Romans 8, 13. Now... I was driving through Amish country and I passed by a church and they had a big old sign out in the front yard and it said, read Romans 8 again. <laughs> I like that. Go ahead and read 7, 8, and 9 again. Amen? <laughs> I love it. I just went ahead and did it. Romans 8, read it again. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. Now he's writing to Holy Ghost filled, water baptized, Jesus name, tongue talking, church going people. Okay? He's not, this don't apply to sinners. Sinners are going to live after the flesh. Sinners are going to sin. They're going to do what sinners do until they're born again. If you've repented, you need to be baptized into Christ, into the name of Jesus. Take on that name and come out of the water. A newborn creature. Amen? If you live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if you through the Spirit, uh, don't skip that right there. If you through the Spirit, capital S, the Holy Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Now you can't mortify the deeds of the body with a with a hatchet with an ink pen and a piece of paper. You can't mortify the deeds of a body by a long list of do's and don'ts on your dashboard of your car. You can't mortify the deeds of the body by just staying away from people or just going to church. You do it by the Spirit. Something has to empower you beyond you. I can't live after the Spirit, but the Holy Spirit in me certainly can. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. For as many as are led by the Spirit, capital S, of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage, little s, again to fear, but ye have received the spirit, capital S, of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. <laughs> Spirit of adoption. I don't deserve it. You don't deserve it. That little baby that was adopted didn't do anything to earn adoption. But the hearts of a Man and a woman decided, 
We want that baby to be our baby. I was born to my mom and dad, and they didn't get to pick anything about me. I mean, and thank God they didn't bring me home and say, you little disappointment. We tried. I used to hate it when I heard parents say, yeah, she's our little accident. Stop it. Come on, somebody. But I've got a, a younger brother who's just coming to the Lord in amazing ways right now, and his name is Brent, and he was adopted because my mom and dad said, we want him. And I'm telling you what, he got treated pretty good. I hope he's watching me because uh, he knows it. He knows he's the favorite. He can't figure out why, but he knows he's the favorite. But they chose. We had, we had three children, myself, my brother Mark, and my sister Dorcas. And then seven years after Dorcas, my mom and dad said, oh, we need a baby around here. We, we want to love somebody else. We got three children, but we got four barrels of love to give away. So let's get another baby. And the, God opened the door, and they, they went and adopted my brother, Brent. Chosen. The spirit of adoption is on this house. You didn't just look us up online in alphabetical order and pop in here by accident. You're about to be adopted into a family of believers because we got more love to give. Amen. Amen. Like that doctor told my wife when she broke her hip, don't lay there in pain. I got more medicine than you got pain. I'm here to tell you, we got more love than you got trouble. We got more love than you got disappointment. We used to have a big banner over the whole sanctuary in the old building. It said, love like you've never been hurt. Come on. Put the past behind you. Forget the things that are behind Walk into this new covenant, arms wide open, heart wide open. Be all you can be. Love like you've got no better sense. Amen? Love like you've never been hurt. That person in front of you ain't the one that hurt you 30 years ago, so stop it. Amen? Let the cross do what the cross does. Divide you from your past. Erase your past. Walk out of it, take off that old coat, take off that old skin, and walk into a new creature in Christ Jesus. Somebody shout amen. You'll, walk, you'll pass from walking in the flesh to walking in the spirit. You'll pass from a, being a taker on the earth to being a giver on the earth. You were, God never created a taker in humanity. There are no human leeches. We're all created to multiply, replenish, produce. That's why we call our pathways groups connect, grow, produce. Once you connect, you're getting a start on, on producing, but then you have to grow up an apple tree doesn't grow apples the first year or the second year or the third year. But around the fourth or fifth year, fruit. Hey, if you're a new believer and there's not much fruit happening, it's okay. You're fine. Amen? Kenny bought a cow, milk cow, and not giving any milk. Won't give milk next year probably. But how about... The year after, he'll be giving milk away or selling it. He'll have milk, right? Yeah. More milk than probably him and Olivia really need. But not today. You move from pleasure and pleasing yourself to sacrificing yourself for others. So many of the sins of the flesh are birthed out of I need, my need. 
I don't know how many divorces I've witnessed where people said, yeah, my needs are just not being met. Well, that told me all I need to know. People leave the church. Yeah, I just wasn't getting much out of it. And you won't get much out of the next one or the next one or the next one until you figure out it's not about what I can get out of life. It's about what I can do to promote, bless, multiply, produce in the earth. You're not a taker. You're not born to be entertained. Young people, hear me. Put that screen down. Look at somebody in the eye. Pour your love on somebody. That phone don't know what you're doing and don't care. Well, how about that little rant? Hey, you got too much to give. Stop just wasting time with a stupid machine. Amen? The world needs you. God made you to multiply and replenish, and you can't do that sitting on your can. Get up. Get moving. Amen? Go work a week with Doug, and you'll figure out there's more to life. Amen? Amen? He'll tell you. He'll sing to you while you're working. God will move you from death to life, from taking to giving, from selfishness to thinking about others. The Spirit of God will do that in you. The Spirit of God will move. I don't care how old you are. It doesn't matter. You can be selfish and be 98. It's not just a young generation that's selfish. huh? I know some old folks that's so self-centered, you don't even want to be around them. Get with God. Get, in, get with the program. Amen? Start loving others. Start giving. Start sacrificing. You'll, le- you'll learn all this my, 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 me, me, me. It's not going to get you anywhere. You're not going to be happy. The reason you're depressed is because you're thinking about you. I'd be depressed too. Think about me all the time. But boy, when I think about Brittany or that other, we got a new Brittany. Hi, Brittany. I think about both them Brittany's. I think about Matthew over here in his tuxedo and bow tie. I get a big old grin on my face. You didn't wear that bow tie? It would go with that shirt. Listen to me. Okay. Let's make it real. Let's bring it home, okay? Romans 6, verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Woo! What then shall we say? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? He answers this question so fast and so succinct. God forbid! Period. It's done. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. You got two choices. You only got two choices. You're going to make covenant with somebody. When you partake of that sin, You're making a covenant with that thing. I didn't write the Bible. I'm just preaching it. Don't look at me like a possum eating briars. When you start making covenants with sin, you're going to get this business here. When you start making covenants with righteousness, you yield yourself over to things and you become a slave to it. Money, jobs, drugs, alcohol, prosperity, popularity, relationships, 
sexual activity outside of marriage, whatever it is, you yield yourself to it, and all of a sudden, you were just trying to stick your toe in the water and test it a little bit, and the next thing you know, whoop, it pulled you in, you're knee deep, you're waist deep, you're swimming, whoa, how did I get in this mess? Know you not that to who you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Verse 17, everybody say, but God. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you, that gospel that I'm preaching to you today, being then made free from sin... You became servants of righteousness. All you got to do is yield yourself over to what you're feeling right now. The conviction of God that's moving in your heart. The truth that is settling into your spirit and you feel it strong pulling you. Whoo! I've got to do this. I've got to make a change. I've got to get better. I've got to get free. And 183 days later, whoo, still free. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead and give God some more shouts of praise. He's worthy. Hallelujah. There's a covenant size hole. In every heart, born of a woman. Everything that you've ever done to satisfy or pacify that covenant-shaped hole is false. It's unfruitful. It's empty. I recently visited another church and I heard a well-known gospel singer share a testimony and I feel like it'll help someone here today. Bill Gaither told about his daughter Suzanne when she was real little she had trouble giving up her pacifier and it you know it's always that challenge in, in every child that loves the pacifier you have to find ways to trick them and the dog named Budgie ate Lindsay's <laughs> truth It worked. Didn't work on Suzanne. It got so serious, and she got to growing up with that, and they finally were not getting sleep at night and, and, and just really battling this, and they went to the doctor. Doctor, what do we do? And the doctor, you know, shared a few things, and then finally the doctor said, don't worry about it. Just let her do it. And they backed off. And it wasn't too long. Gloria was working in the kitchen, and Suzanne comes walking up to her mommy with her pacifier in her mouth, and she reaches up, and she pulls it out of her mouth and says, Here, Mommy, you take it. It's empty. I don't know what you're holding on to, but God wants to show you that you can bring it here. You can lay it down right here. Say, here, God, it's empty. You take it. You take it, God, it's empty. 
The things of this world won't satisfy. You've been a slave too long to that thing. And nobody can beat it out of you. Nobody can make you do it. Nobody, your mama can cry. Your, your, your friends can tell you, you need to quit that. And, you know, you got to get to the point where you say, here, Jesus, you take it. It's empty. Would you stand with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would move on the hearts standing in this room, God. Show us that thing that is so empty that we've been holding on to so long and so tight, so tenaciously. Have your way, Jesus. So I'm going to give you a chance right now to let go. Let go of the back of that seat in front of you. Let go of that person you're holding on to. Make your way out into the aisle. If you're, if you're standing near somebody that's praying or that needs prayer, just make it easy for them to get out. Help them. Touch them. Bring them. Grab them by the hand and say, come on, go pray with me. That's it. That's it. That's it. Come on. Come on. Step out. Go ahead. Move out of your seat. Don't, don't stand there and wait. It's a safe place for you to be convicted. It's a safe place for you to get right. You want to be water baptized? Come, let me, let me help you. Come on. That's it. That's it. That's it. Nobody's going to do anything to you but just let you give it to Jesus. That's it. Don't hesitate. Sing it. With your melody, you surround me with a song of deliverance. Come on, praise team and prayer team. Come on, prayer team. Step out. Come on, guys. You want to talk to us about water baptism, about repentance? These guys will pray with you. They love you. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. I've been born again to your family. Blood flows through my veins. Yes, I'm no. Uh, yes, I am, I am a, a child, child of God. God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Sing it, everybody. You have, have chosen me. me. This is my prayer to the Lord. Love has called my name. Love has called my name. I've been born again <laughs> into your family. Woo. The blood flows through my veins. Yes.
Yes, it does. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God.
Now turn to somebody and sing it to them. It's a testimony. Amazing grace, how sweet. Oh, how sweet the sound. That person that you told was beautiful. It's because of grace. You're beautiful. Like me. But now, oh, now I'm found. Yes, I was blind. You made to do something upbeat. But now I see. Let's praise the Lord for amazing grace. Hallelujah. 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 Woo! And the greatest miracle of all. Four. Four people Thank today. You, Jesus. you gave your heart to the Lord on Easter Sunday. Ha! Want to be baptized on Mother's Day. Woo! Hallelujah! Greatest miracle. Praise the Lord with me.
Go ahead and shout amen. amen. Woo! Hallelujah. Well, if this, if this kind of church doesn't light your fire, your wood's wet. It'll dry out and you'll get a fire going real soon. Uh, don't forget to uh, sign up for Pathways July, the LifeWise table at the kitchen corner. And if you lost your cell phone, too bad, we sold it. No, no, no. I'm just kidding. Uh, the ushers have your cell phone. So just see an usher, and if you can unlock it, you can have it. All right? If you want to hear more about water baptism, we have a booklet that explains it in just a few minutes' time. You can read this, and God can touch your heart. You can be water baptized. We've got four for Mother's Day baptism, and we'll add to that number, I'm sure. God bless you all. Love on somebody. Hug somebody. Have a great week. We'll see you Wednesday at 7.